So we're going to look at granulocytes. And basically, these are types of uh, white blood cells um, that are differentiated based on the granules that they have within their cytoplasms. So as a result of the differences in the shape of their nuclear and also the presence of cytoplasm, it gives them a very special um, characteristic which enables it to fight uh, infection uh, in the body. So basically, they are, they are called polymorphonuclear leukocytes, and the reason is they can take uh, different kind of shapes uh, within their nuclear. So they get their names basically based on the um, enzyme that their granules produce and also the kind of staining that they, their granules can be stained with. So approximately 60% uh, of the white blood cells that we have uh, consist of granulocytes. So they, they make the bigger chunk of uh, the leukocytes. Therefore, they are very important uh, when we talk about uh, infection. So this basically uh, granulocytes have two main roles. Um, and one is to fight off the infections. And then based on which type of granulocyte we're talking about, you'll find others that are responsible for like even allergic response. So their distinctive morphology um, is based on two things. As we said, the granules that they have within the cytoplasm and also the nucleus. So the granules can be differentiated um, based on this, the, the, the type of stain that they get with the, with the dyes and also they can be differentiated based on the lobes that um, their nucleus form. So granulocytes, as we said earlier, they, they play a very important role in uh, immune response. So both innate immunity and adaptive immunity. So, but where do they come from? So as most of the um, uh, immune cells, granulocytes are produced um, from the hematopoiesis process. And specifically, if we end up producing granulocytes, that process is called granulopoiesis. So the origin is from the stem cells, and the, um, so the bone marrow from the stem cells. And from there, they follow the myeloid pathway. They normally follow the myeloid pathway. As you know, we have the myeloid and the lymphoid pathway. So granulopoiesis followed, follows the myeloid pathway so that we end up producing uh, the, the granulocytes. So from this pathway, as you can see, this is a, plori, uh, a pluripotent um, hematopoietic stem cell which can differentiate and follow either a myeloid pathway or a lymphoid pathway. So in the myeloid pathway, we have other things that are produced like uh, megakaryocytes, erythrocytes, and all the others. But through the, uh, the, 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 the other, through the myeloblast, we can have eosinophils, neutrophils, basophils, and you can also see mast cells that are produced from the myeloid pathway. But the other things that are also produced from the same pathway, like the monocytes and macrophages, which are, are granulocytes. So, but the granulocytes are the mast cells, the basophils, the neutrophils, and the eosinophils. And they are called so because of the presence of the granules within their cytoplasm. So, as I say, we can have four different types, the neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils, and mast cells. And each one of them, um, except for mast cells, can be identified by the color of the granules that they stain with. Okay, so the contrast in staining feature depicts the di um, the differences in the common uh, in, the, in the chemical composition of each one of these. So, then we start with the first on the neutrophils. So they are called neutrophils. These was because basically they can um, stain with both the acidic and basic dye. So neutral meaning like can take a neutral kind of uh, basis in terms of uh, dyeing or staining staining by the different dyes, whether basic or acidic. So we get the name neutrophils, uh, but it can also called a uh, polymorphonuclear um, leukocyte, and it's based on the different morphology that it's the, the nucleus can take. So it's normally multilobed. The nucleus of um, neutrophils are multilobed, as you can see this image. It has several lobes, and it is granulated. So we can see we have granules all over. So one of the very important things we need to know about neutrophils that they they are the most abundant, as in they make up the most kind of granulocytes that are there within the leukocytes. So account to almost um, an average of 60%. Okay, so 
And again, it is the first one that normally arrives at, at a site of infection or inflammation. And it has phagocytic properties where it can engulf the, the antigen or the pathogenic agent. So this is very important when we have infections and even when, you, when the, they do a full hemogram and you have something like an infection, you'll have elevated levels of neutrophils. So their lifespan is approximately three days. So neutrophils are very important. They are the most abundant. They are the first to arrive at the site of infection and they are phagocytic in nature. We go to eosinophils as the second one. So they're called eosinophils because they die um, with the acidic dye, which is called eosin. So the acidic dye, eosin red, is the one that now dyes there, the, or stains the, the granules, as you can see. So these granules are stained red, okay? So um, it has bilobed nucleus. As you can see, the nucleus is a bilobe, but it's also granulated. It accounts to roughly 3% of all the leukocytes that are there. So more importantly, xenophils basically are phagocytic, but they, are, they play a very crucial role in parasitic uh, kind of infections. And they do that by secreting um, some xenophilic granules, which now damage the membranes of most of these helminths or these parasites. So parasitic organisms are normally responded to by the eosinophils. okay? Then the basophils, they are called basophils because they die with a, they, they stain with a basic dye, the methylene blue. And as you can see, the granules here are blue in color. So that is the stain that they, they get, the, the stain color that they get because they they, they stain with basic, uh, a basic dye, methylene blue. So that's why we have the name basophils. So these ones have um, a lobed nucleus, as you can see, the nucleus is lobed, it's granulated, uh, but you can see the amount of granules are not so many, and that is one of the differences we'll actually see when we compare basophils and mast cells. So they constitute, they're very few, actually it's the least uh, populated kind of uh, granulocyte. So it, we have less than 1% of basophils um, in circulation. So, but their main function is in these granules, um, once they open up, they normally have some pharmacological active agents like heparin or um, histamine, okay? And for that, they, they play also a, a role in allergic responses, uh, but they, they've also been known to um, play a role in stimulation and differentiation of uh, CD4 cells, and also it plays a role in antigen presentation. Okay, so basophils are important also for allergic responses. So we need to know that they are non-phagocytic and these ones do not engulf uh, the pathogens. So the last one is the mast cell. Now, previously, mast cell used to be thought as like a, a, a subgroup or just a, an example of uh, basophil. Until now, it was uh, found that there are major differences just between mast cells and uh, basophils. Uh, so mast cells, these ones are released into blood as undifferentiated cells. But now they do not actually differentiate until they leave the blood and they enter the tissue. So once they enter the tissues, that is when they're, they're very well differentiated. They have their granules and all that. And as you can see from this image, mast cells have a huge population of gran um, the granules. So it has more granules and it is normally bigger in size than basophils. It is non-phagocytic, and in terms of the um, role, it almost plays the same role with um, basophils because these granules also have uh, agents like heparin and histamine. So mast cells, are, that is the main difference between uh, mast cells and basophils. It is mostly the number of granules that we have and the size. And as you can see in this image, they are normally activated. So when um, the they interact with the IgE, the immunoglobulin. They are able to actually now release. They release um, the granules, okay? And uh, as you know, IgE also uh, is responsible for some of the work uh, for allergic responses, okay? So those are the those are the four types of uh, granulocytes that we have: the mast cells, the basophils, the eosinophils, and the neutrophils. So thank you so much.